then that takes us to a guy who seems to have been linked to the Browns for the better part of a year or a year and a half now. Um, Unique Ngakwe, rumored, Browns rumored to be interested in him. Are you guys surprised that we're interested in another edge rusher? Not really. Not an interior guy? I Honestly, it didn't shock me because that's one position that I don't feel you can ever have enough top-end talent at, especially when you're trying to I don't know. We've been trying to find that guy opposite Miles and we got Zadarius Smith and that's awesome, but you don't want Miles and Smith playing every single down out there. You need you need the depth, especially, you know, God forbid injuries happen or they just need a breather, take some, you know, a series or two off. I mean, Oboe is excellent. We've got the rookie McGuire, but man, if you could bring in a guy like Ngakwe, I mean, this guy's a sack machine. Could you Im- imagine the flexibility Jim Schwartz would have up front if you sign a unique Ngakwe? Man. And you put, and then you could run a D line sometimes um, of Miles Garrett, Tomlinson, Zadarius Smith could play on the inside and you could have unique Ngakwe. I mean, that's getting after the pass rusher or the passer. Like that's, yeah. that's four dogs up front. You know, it's, it would give Schwartz so much flexibility. It would almost be an embarrassment of riches. We'd go from like one of the worst defensive lines an NFL team's ever had to, I mean, on paper, you know, obvi- everything's on paper right now. I can't, yeah. you know, um, they haven't done anything yet, but on paper, that's got to be one of the, the best defensive lines in football if if we were to sign him. I don't know about you guys. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, as far as the interior goes, the only two guys I've really got eyes for right now would be Matthew Ioannidis and Shelby Harris. And if they can get in Gawkwe, like you said, then the versatility on the defensive line, you offset what you maybe don't have solidified at that second defensive tackle position, but we still have great players to rotate there, you know, with Ika and Hurst and Hill and Elliott. Like, we'll be okay, and Winfrey will be okay. If we get a guy like Ngakwe to go with those other edge rushers, man, it's going to be nasty. Yeah, I saw his last his last contract was for thirteen million a year, and that was a fully guaranteed contract. Um, do you see the Browns doing something similar to that or not? I don't think they're going to spend it all. Honestly, I think I I, I think we've been like that Zedarius, uh that kind of caught us off guard a little bit. I, I don't really see, especially for guys that have been sitting here this long now, all of a sudden we're going to just jump in out of nowhere. I, I'd i love it. Don't get me wrong. I, I think he's great. And he played for Indianapolis last year and was a stud. Pretty sure he led the team with uh, uh, sacks. I think nine he and half, something like that. Nine yeah. and a half, and he led the uh, Raiders the year before with 10. Yeah. So nine and a half in 15 games. Yep. Yeah. I like him. I just, I think that we might be at a point where we kind of just settle down we just settle in, take what money is left over. I know uh, we say the cap doesn't really matter and all that, but our cap hit's going to be terrible next year. Uh, there's going to be guys that are going to get cut regardless, but I don't know. I think we just roll it over and just roll the cap. I, I think the Browns make one more move. They, they didn't rework these contracts in my opinion. They, they didn't rework them for nothing. Uh, and we reworked what Harrison Bryant and who, who was the other guy? Jordan Elliott. And Jordan yeah. Elliott. I think they're freeing up a little bit. I don't think they're going to go crazy. This is why, like the I, last episode, I said I don't think we're going to sign DeAndre Hopkins. I still don't think we're going to sign DeAndre Hopkins. Um, well, like and I could see us. I mean, the longer Ngakwe sits, the you know the cheaper he becomes, and um, and and you got to think he would be enticed to play with for a guy like Jim Schwartz and to play opposite Miles Gary, like that's a good situation for him. Um, so uh, I could see it happen. I, I just think the Browns have one more move in them. And again, I don't necessarily think it's like, cause like you said, we, you know, I don't think we're going to break the bank, but I, I think there's just one more like roster solidifying move in up Andrew Barry's sleeve. I bet. So We'll see what it is. At least that's what I'm thinking. What about what about you, John? Were you surprised we were we were gonna go edge? Or were you thinking interior? Were you not thinking? Uh <laughs> probably that one. Man, I'm uh, Josh said it best though. I'm not I mean, I'm not surprised that they're going after 
you know, or reportedly interested in, you know, great talent in general, regardless of the position, because you really can't be too deep, honestly. Um, with Ngakwe too, like I, I'd be, you know, I'd be real pumped if we got him. But with for me, it's the money right now. I don't know if we're spending the money. I also think if 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 the reports are true and we're really interested in him, and we're interested in another edge rusher, to me that thinks Andrew Barry thinks the Browns are going to be playing with a lead a lot. And, you know, second half, fourth quarters, other teams are going to be forced to pass to try to get back into a game because we're going to be playing from with a lead and you need as many pass rushers as you can to get after the quarterback late. I mean, you'd have four guys that you could have on some kind of rotation that come fourth quarter should be very fresh between Miles, Smith, Oboe, and Ngakwe. I mean, you could... Imagine putting a fresh Miles out there in the fourth instead of a guy who's been sucking wind since early third quarter. Like yeah, we talked last week about um, Brown Tiger's question with the secondary and the way we think they're going to play. If we're playing with a lead and teams are forced to throw, our our defense is just going to have a field day. Like it's going to be so fun to watch. Yeah, because it's our secondary's no chip. No, <laughs> really, not at all. Like, it, it, it's hard not to get excited, and I'm trying so hard not to get excited because we've been good on paper so many times. But, man, it I feel like maybe we had Browns colored glasses on the couple of ye- last couple of years because there were definitely some holes in the team like last year in tier D line and, uh, you know, wide receiver year before, that kind of thing. Um, but, man, it's very hard to go through this roster and pick out the holes. Like, yeah. like where is the where is the major, major need for the Browns right now? Hey, it's – it's hard to find it. And if yeah. you're win now, if you're all in, which I think we are win now, or win now mode at least, why not? I mean, why not? Because if you're in a small window, like especially just with contracts and stuff, this is it. Like, so if you if there's a guy out there that you can get for a decent contract, pull the trigger. You absolutely have to put every every everything into it. This is it. No, I, I completely agree. Let's go for broke, which we're going to talk about, you know, what's considered a good season for the Browns this year later. So um, we'll, we'll save that for that. Uh, but no, I agree. We're, the Browns are clearly in win down mode. It's that's that's the mindset. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It, like I said, I, I feel like he's been linked to the Browns multiple times over the last year or so. And it's never happened. But maybe this will be the time that they get it, the uh, the deal done. We were in trade talks with the Jaguars a few years back whenever he was still yep. with them. Yep. Before he got moved to Baltimore. Baltimore. Minnesota first. Minnesota first and then yep. Baltimore, my yep. fault. Yep. So he's kind of been, he's kind of bounced around. And one thing that he did say he wants is he wants he's ready for a multi year deal and some stability with his team, which is it's hard to say, but it is the Browns. I mean, we got Jim Schwartz. This this team has been you know, maybe the record hasn't reflected the last couple of years the way we wanted to, but it has been stable as far as the players, the coaching, and everything like that. So, you got Jim Schwartz. I could see the Browns bringing him on like a somewhat a team friendly two year deal or something just to kind of make sure we have that edge rusher next year because I don't know if Smith will be around or not. Yeah, he might be a one year rental. Mm-hmm. We we talked about. I don't like that term, but it just depends. It depends on what else the Browns have too. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.